Hey guys, welcome you all in T3P Technology to the Point. In this video, we will talk about more questions related to AWS Certified Solution Architect exam. And this is the new version which is launched now because earlier version that SAAC02 is expired. So this part is also prepared in a way that it will help you for the new version of exam. I just gone through the topics and uh, cover uh, trying to cover each topic from the new version. So in this video, we will go through the questions and their explanation. And also we will understand why we are not choosing the wrong options given and why we are choosing the correct answer. So that will help you to remember longer period of time. If there is any change in the question also, so you will be easily to tackle that questions. So without wasting time, let's get started start with the questions. So guys, let's talk about this question. In this question, they are asking an application has multiple components for receiving request that must be processed and subsequently processing the request. And the company requires a solution for decoupling the application component and the application receives around 10,000 requests per day and request can take up to two days to process them. Request that failed to process must be retained. Which solution meet this requirement most efficiently? So the option we are having First, create an Amazon DynamoDB table and enable DynamoDB streams. Configure the processing component to process request from the stream. Next option we are having, decouple the application components with an uh, Amazon SQS queue. Configure a dead letter queue to collect the request that failed to process. Next option we are having, use an Amazon Kinesis data stream to decouple application component and integrate the processing component with the Kinesis client library that is known as KCN. The last option we are having, uh, decouple the application components with an Amazon SQS topic, configure the receiving component to subscribe to the SQN topic. So we have two options with SQS queue and SQS topic and one with the Amazon DynamoDB table and stream, another is Amazon Kinesis data stream. So in the questions they are asking, uh, it is having multiple components and the company required a solution for decoupling the application components. And uh, the main requirement they are having, they don't want to lose the request. They want to retain those requests up to two days. That is the actual requirement. So now let's go through the options one by one. So if you will see the first option that is uh, saying create an Amazon DB or DynamoDB table and enable DynamoDB streams, uh, configure the processing component to process request from the stream. See, this solution will not work here because it doesn't uh, offer any kind of retaining the request that failed to process or removal of items from the table and is therefore it is less efficient so we will not go with the option one let's talk about the second option so in this option they are uh, saying that decouple the application components with an amazon sqs queue and configure a dead letter queue to collect the request that failed to process which is actually required in the question so why we are going with this option the reason is the sqs service we are having is ideal for decoupling the application component and its standard queues can support up to 1 lakh 20 thousand in flight messages and messages can be written for up to 14 days here the request is uh, it is general, uh, receiving around 10,000 requests per day and we need to take it up to two days so so the correct answer for this question will be second because it will ensure the retention of request that fails to process. So in this question, we will go with the option two. Why we are not going with the option three that is Amazon Kinesis data stream to decouple application component and integrate the processing component with the KCR because it is less efficient solution and would, uh, will be less cost effective. Means if we will compare Amazon SQS service and this one, then it is costly than the Amazon SQS. So we are always looking for the most efficient service and we also want to save the cost as per the requirement. So we will not go with the third option. The last option is decouple the application component with the Amazon SQS topic and configure the receiving components to subscribe the SNS topic. Uh, this is wrong actually uh, because it will not store any request. It directly get the request and forward all the notification to the subscriber. So, but in the question, they are asking to retain the request for up to two days. So we are having only one option here that is Amazon SQS queue. So it will help us to fulfill this requirement. That's why we will go with the option two here. So now let's talk about next question. 
let's talk about this question in this question they are asking a solution architect has been tasked with migrating 30 tb of data from on premises data center within 20 days the company has an internet connection that is limited to 25 mbps and the data transfer cannot use more than 50 percent of the connection speed what should a solution architect do to meet these requirements so in the question they are actually they are having 30 tb of data and they just have 20 days time to migrate this data from your organization's data center to aws cloud and they are having the internet connection of 25 tb and but we can use only 15 50 percent that means 12.5 mbps we can use so the option we are having aws data sinks AWS storage gateway, AWS snowball and the last option we are having side to side VPN. So the thing is uh, if you uh, calculate this thing uh, 30 TB of data if you will migrate with the speed of 25 Mbps it will take around 200 days and uh, we are just having 20 days but here we are not using still uh, even 25 Mbps we can use up to 12.5 Mbps so the days will more than 200 and we don't have that limitation so we need to avoid in this question which is option related to the internet so if you will see the option like aws data sync aws storage gateway and side to side vpn these three option like first second and fourth are related to the internet they use internet to move the data or migrate the data so we can't go with these options so we are having only one AWS Snowball that is the physical device which will come to your data center and then you can upload your data and move migrate this data to AWS cloud. So that is the feasible option I can see from out of four. So I'll go with the AWS Snowball. So that's it for this question. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. A company has created a disaster recovery solution for an application that runs behind an application load balancer. The DR solution consists of a second copy of the application running behind a second application load balancer in another region. The solution architect requires the method of automatically updating the DNS record to point to the ALB in the second region. What actions should the solution architect take? The option we are having enable an application load balancer health check. Uh, second option use Amazon event bridge to cluster the ALBs. Third option enable an Amazon root 53 health check. Fourth option is configure an alarm on a cloud trail tray. So what exactly the, uh, the, uh, they are asking in the question. So they created a disaster recovery solution for application which is actually running behind a load balancer. And the DR solution consists second copy of the application as well which is also running behind the second load balancer which is actually in different region. So solution architect requires a method to automatically update the DNS record to point the application load balancer in the second region so let's talk about the options one by one first they are talk, uh, saying about the enable an alb health check so this option is not correct actually uh, the reason this will simply perform the health check of an instance behind the application load balancer but uh, we uh, we are here looking for combination of something which can help us to update the dns records as well so this will not help here second option they are talking about the use amazon event bridge to cluster the alb so this is also not correct because we can't cluster alb in any way so this option is wrong here third option enable an amazon root 53 health check it seems correct to me because amazon root 53 health checks monitor the health and performance of our application especially the web application web servers and other resources and each health check that we create can monitor the health of a resource or a status of the other health checks status of an amazon cloud watch alarm as well so this is the something which can help us uh, to uh, update the dns record as well because root 53 uh, if you know that uh, this is the service which is kind of a dns service in amazon web services means aws cloud so this is seems correct to me let's talk about the first option or fourth option then we will decide which is more accurate the first fourth option they are talking about configure an alarm on cloud trail trail it's, it's also not correct here because it only records the api's activities so it will not help us to update the dns record which is pointed to alv so the accurate or we can say the most po uh, possible answer what i can see it is enable an amazon root 53 health check so i'll go with this one 
so in any question if you think that it is not correct just mention in the comment section and give the reference why you are not uh, okay with the answer so it will help others as well so let's talk about next question now uh, let's talk about this question in this question they are asking a company need, needs to migrate a large quantity of data from an on-premises environment to Amazon S3 the company is connected by a AWS direct connect that is DX connection uh, the company requires a fully managed solution that will keep the data private and automate and accelerate the replication of the data to AWS storage service which solutions should a solution architect recommend the option we are having deploy an AWS storage gateway volume gateway in stored volume mode and take point in time copies of the volumes using AWS backup next option we are having deploy an AWS storage gateway file gateway with a local cache and store the primary data set in Amazon S3 next is deploy an AWS data sync agent for the on-premises environment configure a task to replicate the data and connect it to public endpoint last option is deploy an AWS data sync agent for the on-premises environment and configure a task to replicate the data and connect it to VPC endpoint so let's talk about the requirement first what it is the requirement we need to migrate the data from your organization to AWS or we can say Amazon S3 the company is connected by AWS direct connects so it can use direct and data sync as well so the company requires a fully managed solution that will keep the data private when this talking about the data private we will know we can't go with the public endpoint here in the third option so it is out of scope at this point of time because when we use public endpoint the data will go over the uh, through the internet so we can't use this option here when we are talking about the uh, private okay so third option we can go so let's talk about first second and fourth option now so the thing is before talking about all three options so, uh, if you understand that uh, these all all options are belong to AWS storage gateway or AWS data sync so first understand what is AWS data sync which can be used to automate and accelerate the replication of data to AWS storage service on the other hand storage gateway is used for hybrid scenarios where servers need local access to the data with various options for storing and synchronization the data to AWS storage service so storage gateway does not accelerate replication of data but here as per requirement we are looking for accelerate the replication of data to AWS storage gateway so storage service so in this case uh, the options related to the storage gateway is also out of scope so as we already discussed due to private requirement data privacy um, private requirement we can't go with the public endpoint and we can't go with the AWS storage gateway as well so all first three options gone from here so the correct answer for this question is deploy an AWS data sync agent for the on-premises environment and configure a task to replicate the data and connect it to a VPC endpoint that is the actual requirement of this question so we will go with the option number four here so that is our correct answer for this question let's talk about next question now so guys that's it in this part uh, i hope you find these questions helpful and uh, it will help you to prepare for your aws solution architect exam and uh, we will go for, uh, for more questions in our next part till then stay tuned and share this video with your friends who are preparing for this exam and don't forget to click on like button that is the only way i get the motivation to work on more content for you so see you in next video till then happy learning